Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi folks, here is Azenis for today's edition. Malaysia's new Prime Minister takes office amid Skeleton Health Crisis. Istana Negara bagi menghadap dan memohon perkenan ke bawah dunia. Malaysia swore in a new Prime Minister, Ismail Sabri Yaakub, as the Southeast Asian nation battles its worst COVID-19 surge and public anger grows over mismanagement of the pandemic. The appointment of Ismail Sabri, 61, restores the role to a party tainted by graft accusations after he secured a parliamentary majority from the same alliance that collapsed last week and replaced Muhyiddin Yassin. The constitutional monarch says Ismail Sabri, formerly Muhyiddin's deputy, swore in at the National Palace after being picked by King Al-Sultan Abdullah. He takes the oath of office in front of the monarch and other coalition leaders including former Prime Minister Najib Razak. With Ismail Sabri in office, the post is being returned to the United Malaysia National Organization, which governed for more than six decades since independence, but it was defeated in a 2018 election over a scandal at State Fund 1MDB. He becomes Malaysia's third Prime Minister since the 2018 election, after AMNO pulled its back in for Muhyiddin last month, citing his failure to manage the pandemic. United States offers support to Vietnam to fight Beijing in the South China Sea. United States Vice President Kamala Harris meets Vietnam's top leaders, offers support in several key areas, including enhancing its maritime security in an effort to counter Beijing's increasing assertiveness in the South China Sea. Harris also offers more visits by United States warships during her talks with Vietnam's President Nguyen Xuan Phuc, Vice President Vo Tin An Xuan, and Prime Minister Pan Min Chin. Speaking in Hanoi during a meeting with the Vietnamese president, Harris says there is a need to increase pressure on Beijing over its maritime claims. A White House official says during the talks, Harris offers Vietnam vaccines and aid to tackle COVID-19 and announces the launch of several programs to help combat climate change. Harris' seven-day trip to Singapore and Vietnam is part of a broader United States strategy to realize that Washington hopes will help it challenge China's growing security and economic influence in the region. Afghan refugees in Indonesia protest in the capital Jakarta oppose the delayed resettlement process. Hundreds of Afghan refugees protest in Indonesia's capital Jakarta against a prolonged resettlement process they needed to be offered new homes now that repatriation was out of the question with the return of the Taliban. We have come here to ask to, get to, to know about our future. We are tired of waiting in limbo. We have waited about 8 to 10 years, everyone. We have lost our family members, our loved ones. Everyone is painful here. Everyone has the same pain. We want the world to hear our voices. And we are really thankful to Indonesian people, to Indonesian government for understanding us. We are really sorry. We, we are really, really sorry to have, to have broken this uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, COVID lockdowns. Minor scuffles between police and demonstrators take place outside in the office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. After warning had been given to disperse given the public health risks, with the capital still recovering for a wave of coronavirus infections. A spokesperson for UNHCR is not immediately available for comment. Thousands of refugees from Afghanistan, most of them from the Hazar ethnic minority, subject to religious persecution by the Taliban, have lived in Indonesia for years as they await a resettlement in third countries such as Canada or Australia. Indonesia is not a signatory to the 1951 United Nations Convention on Refugees and is predominantly seen as a transit country for those seeking asylum to a third country. United States to donate 1 million Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine to Vietnam to fight pandemic. Vice President Kamala Harris tells Vietnamese Prime Minister Pang Min Chin during a meeting in Hanoi that the United States will donate 1 million Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines doses to Vietnam. 
Vietnam has fully inoculated just 2% of its 98 million population, among the lowest in Asia, as it opted for containment policy and did not rush to procure vaccines, which it deemed financially too risky due to severe global shortage. While the rapid spread of the Delta variant and low vaccinations have caught much of Asia off guard, no country shows more vividly than Vietnam how easily the highly infectious version of the coronavirus can foil a strict containment policy. Nearly all of its 370,000 COVID-19 cases have been detected since May and daily infections jumped above 10,000 for the first time this month, overloading hospitals in the southern part of the country and raising case fatality rates. Prime Minister Pan Min Chin sent a letter to the head of the World Health Organization last week and urged its vaccine-sharing program COVAX to prioritize Vietnam in the faster manner and with the largest volume possible. Vietnam, where anti-China feeling runs strong, has received just around 2.7 million vaccines from China. By contrast, Cambodia, Laos and Indonesia have managed to keep vaccination rates higher by relying on supplies from Beijing. Vietnam has introduced lockdowns and mobilized troops to restrict movements in Ho Chi Minh City, an elimination strategy also adopted by Australia with limited success so far. I should add, Ties between Hanoi and Washington have grown closer more than four decades after the Vietnam War ended in 1975. However, Washington has said there are limits to the relationship until Hanoi makes progress on human rights. Analysts say Vietnam wants to upgrade its diplomatic relations with the United States to a strategic partnership, but is concerned such a move will anger Beijing. Will work with related, Japan will work with related countries to accommodate Afghans coming to Japan. Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga says the Japanese government will work with other countries to respond to the conflict in Afghanistan. To respond to Afghans coming to Japan in the future, upon firmly coordinating with related countries, we will consider the situation each country is in and will respond. That's how I feel. Suga also says the government will work with other countries when asked if he will accept refugees from Afghanistan. The Japanese government sent a military aircraft to Afghanistan to bring back its citizens amid uncertainty in the country after the Taliban seized power. Numerous countries have been sending aircraft to bring back their citizens and some Afghans after the United States and other foreign countries, including Britain, brought in several thousand troops to manage the evacuations. According to the Japanese officials, Japan closed its Afghan embassy and evacuated the last 12 personnel, but a small number of Japanese nationals are still in Afghanistan. China firmly opposes deployment of United States maritime law enforcement forces in the South China Sea. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesman expresses strong opposition to the United States deployment of maritime law enforcement forces in the South China Sea, saying it was attempting to keep its hegemony. Spokesman Wang Wenbin's remarks are in response to the recent offer by United States Vice President Harris to Vietnam, in which he claimed that the United States would support the latter to counter China in the South China Sea, including more visiting by U.S. warships. Chesengcheng, the U.S. has so far refused to exceed the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea while claiming to uphold it. The U.S. arbitrarily launched military intervention in Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria while claiming to defend the interests of smaller countries. I think it will be much more credible if the U.S. said it was trying to maintain its hegemony and uphold its own interests. 
，南海部署海上执法力量，插手地区事务，搅乱地区和平稳定。He points out that the United States is not a party concerned to the South China Sea issue, nor a party to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. China always respects Afghanistan decisions and territorial integrity. Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesman Wang Wenbing at a press briefing in Beijing says China always respects Afghanistan's sovereign independence and territorial integrity, adheres to non-interference in its internal affairs, and pursues a friendly policy toward all Afghan people. Wang made the statement after a Taliban delegation met with the Chinese ambassador to Afghanistan in Kabul. China and the Afghan Taliban have a strong and effective cooperation. Kabul is of course 双方讨论各种药物的重要平台和渠道。我想强调的是，中方对阿富汗的政策是一贯和明确的。我们始终尊重阿富汗的主权独立和领土完整。China and the Taliban in Afghanistan have maintained smooth and effective communication and consultation. Naturally, Kabul is an important platform and channel for the two sides to discuss various important affairs. I would like to stress that China's policy on Afghanistan is consistent and clear. We always respect Afghanistan's sovereign independence and territorial integrity, adhere to non-interference in its internal affairs, and pursue a friendly policy toward all Afghan people. China observes China always respects the decision of the Afghan people for its own future destiny. China respects the Afghan people's independence decision on their own future and destiny, and supports to place the Afghan-led and Afghan-owned principle into place solidly. She adds, China is willing to continue to develop good neighbor lines and friendly cooperation with Afghanistan and play a constructive role in Afghanistan's peace and reconstruction. At least 400 Afghans who left the country arrived in South Korea. Nearly 400 evacuated Afghans arrived in Seoul, where the government says it is amending the law to allow long-term stay for those who worked in South Korean projects in Afghanistan before the Taliban seized power this month. Immigration is a contentious issue in South Korea, where many pride themselves on ethnic homogeneity, even as the population of 52 million ages rapidly and the labor force dwindles. At least two flights brought in 391 people, including the families of workers at the Korean embassy. The Korean International Cooperation Agency says a hospital and Korean government-run vocational training institute and military bases. Meanwhile, Justice Minister Park Bim Kil says many Koreans had received international support after having had to flee during the Korean War from 1950 to 1953. Park adds, the government was in the process of amending immigration laws to grant the Afghans long-term residency as foreigners who had provided special service to the country. South Korea starts COVID-19 vaccine for people aged 18 and 49. South Korea begins its coronavirus vaccine rollout for people aged between 18 and 49 as it aims to give at least one dose to 70% of the population and fully vaccinate 50% by September amid the surge in COVID-19 cases. South Korea reports new 20 COVID-19 deaths, the highest daily count this year, as the number of severe cases more than doubled since the current and worst wave of infections began in July. South Korea has been struggling to boost its immunization drive that began in February amid supply shortages and shipment delays, with about 52.7% of its 52 million people having received at least one dose, while just 26 are fully vaccinated. According to the Korean Disease Control and Prevention Agency, the country reports 1,882 new coronavirus cases, bringing the total to 243,317. A total of 2,257 people have died so far. Thailand launches manhunt for policemen after torture video. The police says Thai authorities launches a manhunt for two police officers suspected of being involved in a torturing to death a man who had been arrested for drug offenses after a video of the incident was shared widely online. The video posted by lawyer Sitra Biambukert on his Facebook page shows what appeared to be a man being suffocated by a plastic bag placed over his head while he was pinned down by four men. 
The deputy police spokesman, Kisano Patana Charuen, in a statement says five police officers from Nakon Sawan province have been detained while around the clock hunt was on for two others. Was on for two others. Arrest warrants issued for the suspects include a charge of murder by torture. Citro, who runs the Legal Aid Foundation, says he received the video clip from a lower ranking office who asked him to pass it to the national police chief, claiming it showed Superintendent Joe of Nakon Sawan Police Station tried to extort money from a drug dealer. According to media who accompanies police on the raid, an official police order identifies Superintendent Joe as a police colonel Titisan Utanapol. Police raided his home in an upmarket residential state in Bangkok and found 13 cars, including a Lamborghini and Ferrari. Thai police chief Suat Chang Yutsuk urges Titisan to surrender to authorities, adds that Prime Minister Prayu Chanwacha had personally instructed police to make improvements in order to restore public confidence in the force. An analyst says Thailand's police are widely seen as one of the country's most corrupt institutions and Prayut's government had pledged reforms. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and have a great day. See you.